und herzlich willkommen zur offiziell 46. Ausgabe des Telestammtisch. Wir haben hier irgendwann neu angefangen zu zählen. Das heißt also, ich habe die ganzen Specials jetzt hier gar nicht drin. Es ist ein totales Tovu Wabohu, heißt das, glaube ich. Egal. Wir haben jetzt hier ein Interview, das auf uns wartet. Ein Interview, das ich geführt habe im letzten Jahr beim Comic Festival in München mit dem lieben Goran Suzuka zu seinem Werk A Walk Through Hell. Beziehungsweise ist es ja eigentlich eine Kollaboration zusammen mit Garth Ennis. Die beiden Hübschen haben hier einen definitiven Mystery-Horror-Thriller-Comic geschaffen, der auch inzwischen in Deutschland erscheint. Bei den Kollegen von CrossCult gibt es inzwischen die ersten beiden Bände. Ich weiß gar nicht genau, ob das jetzt auch die finalen Bände schon sind. Keine Ahnung. Ich habe mir allerdings die Gelegenheit nicht nehmen lassen und dann mal mein Aufnahmegerät aufgestellt, als ich den Goran Suzuka in München zum Künstlergespräch hatte. Ihr müsst euch das vorstellen wie so Panels. Das kennt ihr sicherlich von vielen Conventions da draußen. Da sitzt man dann auf der Bühne, in dem Fall eben der Goran und ich. Und ja, dann unterhalten wir uns so ein bisschen alles komplett auf Englisch. Und ich habe hier nach bestem Wissen und Gewissen meine Englischkenntnisse ausgepackt. Das war auch eine ganz nette Runde. Im Anschluss gab es noch ein bisschen Fragen aus dem Publikum. Die sind etwas schlecht zu verstehen gewesen auf der Aufnahme. Deswegen habe ich hier einfach noch diese Fragen quasi wiederholt, sodass ihr genau wisst, was da eigentlich Phase gewesen ist und ja, worum es letztlich geht. Ihr könnt jetzt hier reinhören, was Goran vor allem eben zur Zusammenarbeit mit Garth Ennis zu erzählen hat, wie er selbst so tickt, was bei ihm zuletzt passiert ist. Er war vor circa zehn Jahren bereits schon mal in München auf dem Comic-Festival gewesen und da ist ihm natürlich das ein oder andere passiert. Es gab ja auch privat ein paar Veränderungen bei ihm und der Goran das ist echt so ein Typ, wenn du bei diesem Festival stehst und dich dann auch mit Künstlerinnen und Künstlern oder eben irgendwelchen Verlagskollegen unterhältst, dann kommst du eben ins Gespräch, man trinkt so ein Bier und irgendwann erzählen die dir, dass die alle schon mal mit Goran auch draußen gestanden haben, Bierchen trinken, der scheint also sehr umgänglich zu sein, genau das war auch mein Eindruck, den ich hatte, als ich ihn persönlich kennenlernen durfte und es war mir eine wahre Freude, mit ihm eine Dreiviertelstunde ungefähr zu sprechen, im Anschluss dann eben die Fragen, da könnt ihr jetzt unbedingt mal reinhören, solltet ihr auch tun, ist nämlich eine echt tolle Sache geworden. Ich freue mich drauf, von euch in irgendeiner Form Feedback zu bekommen, auf Facebook, Twitter, Instagram und beim YouTube-Upload könnt ihr dieses Feedback hinterlassen. Ihr könnt genauso gut auch auf Apple Podcast, auf, auf Podcast.de und so weiter auch mal eine Bewertung da lassen. Da kann man so Sterne vergeben häufig oder einfach irgendeine Punktzahl. Wenn ihr das tätet, tätet das dem Telestammtisch sehr gut, denn so tauchen wir letztlich einfach in ein paar weiteren Rankings auf und ihr könnt das Ganze natürlich eben auch noch teilen. Wenn ihr also eine Social-Media-Plattform eures Vertrauens gefunden haben solltet, dann klickt da mal so lange auf unsere Beiträge und teilt die, bis auch weitere Menschen darauf stoßen. Nun also viel Spaß bei diesem Interview und bis zum nächsten Mal. Ciao. Secrets ah. hidden and then when they come out, this is the skeletons out of the closets. Okay. And my skeletons out of the closets that were revealed then was that uh, I was working for Gespenster Geschichte oh, yeah. okay. for, for six or seven years, early in the 90s. And uh, so it was just a funny joke because skeletons in the closet That's and so this funny. is Gespenster. <laughs> okay, you know, Gespenster so. is a horror anthology, so uh -huh. I draw lots of skeletons there. <laughs> <laughs> Great. This interview is about 10 years ago, yeah? Yes. And maybe you can give us a little update what happened in the last 10 years in your, in your business and maybe in uh -huh. your private career. Okay, mm -hmm. well, so I have to, so 10 years ago, well, yes, it's for, for I, I've been working for American publishers for 20 years now. So first 10 years I spent working uh, uh, for Vertigo, DC Vertigo. So I guess what changed in the last 10 years is that uh, I didn't do much work for Vertigo anymore, but I started working for, for other publishers. And well, the main reason was that Vertigo wasn't doing well. Uh, it's at, still at existed, point. isn't it? Well, it still exists, but yesterday the, the news broke that, that DC is finally canceling Vertigo. So it's, it seems like it's officially the end of Vertigo. Right. Yeah. But on the other hand, Vertigo wasn't doing good for years now. So it's kind of like uh, shooting the horse mm -hmm. with a broken leg, yeah, you know, put him out of his misery. Uh, although I do think that, that DC made the, the wrong decision, you know, they should uh, revive Vertigo, but they should have done it years later. Anyway, uh, so in the last 10 years I started working also for Marvel and uh, for DC on Wonder Woman, and I also worked for, for Marvel on several titles. 
I worked for Image on a title called Ghosted, that's uh, also published here in Germany. And uh, and the latest, latest thing is, is the walk through hell. Anyway, I started doing much more diverse uh, things uh, with, with uh, other publishers. And Because when I started working for American publishers, I started working at Vertigo, that was the most interesting thing for me. But I was also believing for myself, then I'm not the kind of artist that should work on superheroes. Mm -hmm. That's like not my strong point. Turns out I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I, one, eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. I did uh, uh, Wonder Woman that I think went really well. That was uh, Brian Azarello's run. That's also published Very great here. Run. Yeah, Very it's great. a great run. Brian is a really great artist. And Cliff Chang, who is the main artist, mm -hmm. he's amazing. He's an amazing artist. And he did the redesign of all the Greek gods and everything. Yeah. So I really loved it. So when they called me to, to, to work on, on, on Wonder Woman as a rotating artist mm -hmm. for Cliff, I was really happy to, to, to join. Yeah, and that, that, that was a really great experience. And yeah, and later I worked for Marvel. Uh, among other things, I, I, I uh, worked as a fill-in artist uh, on Daredevil. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course, yeah. And that, that was really great. That was also a really great experience. And the only reason why I quit working on Daredevil was because I was approached by Garth Ennis yeah. to do a creator on book with him. And published on Aftershock. And published by Aftershock, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the opportunity you don't say no to. Yeah. But you named lots of great series. Um, yeah. I remember uh, my experience with Why the Last Man. You mm -hmm. held out uh, the guys on, on Why the Last Man. I had tears in my eyes in the end. It was a very great series. I really loved it. It broke my heart. <laughs> uh, yeah, and on the evening, uh, I had a beer outside. Of course, everyone has a beer outside here mm -hmm. <laughs> on the festival. Yeah. And someone really recommended me. Um, the ghost that you, you, you um, mm -hmm. named was very... Uh, um, somebody said it's running under radar. I don't know It's if there's a, um, 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 an English... Um, yeah, I know what it means. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of great things you did. Of course, the great... One of Woman Run you had and other series you helped out on the Hellblade series with the Lady Constantine story. The oh show yeah, that, but the, that's all. Yeah, that, I know yeah, that's okay, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whole series was great but it doesn't, isn't published anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's the end of it. And now you work together with Garth Ennis, one of the greatest Texas authors in, in, the, in the comic industry. Yeah. And um, where did you get to know each other? Well, we met uh, 20 years ago when I started working for Vertigo. I went to San Diego Comic Convention and there we had a Vertigo dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, so we met there, but that was, you know, just handshake meeting, and just meeting, you know. Oh. So this is when we met, but we didn't talk or anything, you know. And uh, after that, I would run into him from time to time on some of the festivals, we will say hi and that's it. Okay. We were never really talking, you know, and, uh, and I have absolutely no idea that he actually likes my work. Oh. Yeah, so I was surprised when he called me. <laughs> well, he didn't call me, I, I got an email from him. And so I was really surprised and flattered and yeah, I, I said yes. <laughs> so he, he, he chose you? Yes, kind of yes, you. yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, and did you get the chance to drink a beer with him? Yes, after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that was uh, spring in 2017, mm -hmm. two years from now. Mm -hmm. And it took some time to arrange everything, to start working on it. Then I started working on it in September and in October I was in New York for the Comic Con. Like every October I would go there. And so that time when I came to New York, uh, we all had a dinner with, with Aftershock people okay. and uh, later I had a... Uh, tomorrow I had lunch and, and drinks with, mm -hmm. with guards, just one on one, where we actually talked for the first time. Uh, and we talked about the book, of course, yeah. And then last October we met again in New York, now as a collaborators. Yeah, so, so, so yeah. 20 years later, yeah. I finally get to talk to him. But it's also even before I met him, uh, I think I said that here in the book also, like in the mid 90s, I read one of the issues of Hellblazer yeah. he wrote. That was the first, first thing I read from him. 
and it was very special issue because uh, I don't know how many of you were reading Hellblazer. Of course. Uh, so that one issue is where Kit, uh, uh, his girlfriend, uh, goes back yeah. to, to Ireland. Yeah. So that whole issue, she's in the pub with, with the her problem. friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And she, she's the whole issue, she's in the pub with her friends and they are talking. Great. That's, you know. So in the middle of 90s, I was totally blown away by by a comic book where people are just sitting and talking, then it's so great to read. I didn't know the context, context because I wasn't reading Hellblazer before that and everything, but it really grabbed me because, uh, and they speak in Irish, so it's written with uh, all this. I had a little bit of hard time reading it, mm -hmm. but still it felt so real because those people in the pub were talking yeah. and you can actually hear them. They, they really sounded like a, like a real people and that really grabbed me. After that I started reading Hellblazer, then Preacher and then lots of stuff that Garth uh, worked on. So really, I, I, Garth is one of my favorite writers of all time, so getting the chance to work with him, it's, it's really... And this was the beginning of your professional relationship, I say, or your business relationship kind of? Is there any personal relationship between with Garth? Them? Yeah. Well, not that much, mm -hmm. not that much. I mean, we would email each other uh, uh, about uh, 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 work uh, all the time and there would be a little bit of uh, uh, not business talk but really not that much really not that much I don't know I still feel like you know he's car tennis and I'm just yeah, yeah like a fanboy <laughs> yeah. you know so I really wouldn't push it okay you know? and uh, he's uh, I mean he's really great he's very sincere and he's very straight to the point mm -hmm. so he would reply within minutes. Oh, this is something I really adore. Like Never you, sleeps. You, well, maybe in some, you know. But but if he's awake, you know, like really, you don't have to wait for his answer on email. Like I would draw something, like send it to him. Like what do you think? Do you like it? And a couple of minutes, I, I would like get the response, and it would be always like very direct and and sincere. So so that's great. You never have to think about uh, it's like does he really like it okay. you know or you know because if there's something wrong if he wants something changed or whatever you know he will tell it straight away mm -hmm. so if also if he says that he really likes it you can be sure that that he does you know so that's a great way but yeah we didn't do too much uh, interaction, interaction yeah. aside from work yeah yeah when, when we met when, in New York, then we would, you know, have a conversation, then those things happen, okay, happen <laughs> like more personal about what you like, yes, yes. Or how do you live, blah, blah, blah. But with emailing, it's, you know, mostly business-like, yeah? And when he mailed you and you started thinking about the series and design and creation and the whole concept and mm -hmm. so on, how complete was the whole concept? Uh, well, when he approached me, he had the pitch. Mm -hmm. The pitch. Uh, which was, I think, two or three pages uh, long. And uh, once we agreed that we're going to work on it, he delivered the, the first issue, written, like the script for the first issue. Uh, and inside, there was basically everything you need to know, mm -hmm. or I need to know as the artist. Uh, so I started working on it and on the first issue, it took me some time. It's, it's a new book, you know, I really wanted it to be good, so I had a really slow start. So, and he had his own rhythm of writing the scripts, where he would write those scripts by the time he said he will do it. Mm -hmm. So, very soon I got the scripts for the next issue and for the next issue and for okay. the next issue. I was still working on the first one or the second okay. one. So. And it, uh, from the start, it was uh, imagined as a standalone story. Mm -hmm. We just wasn't quite sure how many issues, issues will yeah. be, but we knew it's gonna be around 10 to 12. Okay. So it ended up at 12. So I think uh, at the end of last year, mm -hmm. somewhere in December, I think I was still working on number nine or something like that. And by that time, I got the script for issue 12. For the final issue? Yeah, yeah. So I 
you know, got it. Uh, I, I could read it. So there's always work to do for you to do uh, to do your artwork. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I never, I never had to wait for him. I never had to wait for him. So, yeah. And I get to know what happens till the end uh, before everybody else. And now, now I'm finishing uh, number twelve. Uh, that's gonna be out next month mm -hmm. in the states. Yeah. And the second trade paperback will be out in September in the states. So I suppose that uh, CrossCult will follow it. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. second issue. Uh, yeah, yeah, trade yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know yet what are the plans, but yeah. I'm pretty sure by the end of the year you you could. When you got the scripts mm -hmm. and Garth sent them to you, yeah. is there any chance for you to say, mm, I don't like this idea, maybe you should change it like this way? Is there any <laughs> interest? <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't uh, intervene in, into, well, not not just Garth in general. Uh, when I get the script. Uh, you don't. I don't intervene in into dialogues or, or the story mm -hmm. itself. Uh, what I would eventually maybe change sometimes would be the panels. Mm -hmm. Like maybe sometimes you can put the panel in a different way. Sometimes maybe you can merge two panels in one if it works better. Or sometimes you would break the panel into two panels if it works better. So my, I don't know, uh, not all of the artists are doing the same, but my way of working, where I'm most comfortable with, and I think the editors and the writers like it too. So when I get the script, first thing I do, I do kind of like thumbnails or layouts, like really rough uh, sketches of the yeah. pages, where I decide uh, how big or what format would the panels be, where are the characters, where does the balloon go. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that lots of artists are not doing because letterer is doing lettering yeah, yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's really important to 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 place those balloons to to you know to know where they will go, so you can make the composition of, of the page and of each panels. So those drafts I would uh, send to editor and to the writer, mm -hmm. and to so they can check it out and see if it's can all they get working. Go and yeah, 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 yeah. So if I'm proposing any of those changes, like in the angles or the panels, whatever, I will do it at the stage of layouts. Mm -hmm. So we can discuss it. You know, if they don't like it, uh, if you want to do some third way, whatever, this is the, the best opportunity because it's still very rough. I didn't uh, waste my time drawing something, something to the details yeah, yeah. and then it's like, no. Turn okay. the camera around or something like if that. If somebody wants to check these works, these pre-works, I call yeah, pre-works, yeah. and we can have a look at the appendix of this oh, German yeah, yeah. version. Yeah. We have uh, all these different steps of creating the whole, whole yeah, page. Yeah, yes, yes. And it's uh, great, great to right. see it, how, yeah, how yeah, it works. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, that's... that's I, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, this is the stages that, that you can see it here in the books. So after doing the layouts, then I would do the pencils and I would send the pencils to, to make sure everything is okay. After that, I would do the inks and with inks, it's you know that's it, it doesn't happen, but that uh, you do something in pencils and then you ink it and then they want it changed. Yeah. In pencils, sometimes uh, it's very specific with guard and with this book that uh, after I, when I do the pencils, uh, sometimes he would uh, ask for a little bit of changes mm -hmm. uh, on the faces. On the faces. Yes, because uh, there are lots of talk in. in uh, in the book, and those face expressions he's asking from me are really quite subtle, you know. So it's not like, you know, Shaw is angry, okay. McGregor is laughing. Uh -huh. It's like, I uh, can't remember the words right now, you know, but it would be quite subtle. So sometimes, like, I would miss it, you know, and he was like, Can you do <laughs> more like this? Yeah, and it's perfectly fine. I mean, this is my job, and this is. This is one of the things I really have to nail down because it's important when you read it to have those faces uh -huh. properly. And uh, but this is also why it's good, you know. So I do it in pencils. So if I have to change anything, I can do it easily. And once we do it, then inking is the the, the, the final stage. The final stage for me because I'm not doing the colors. Okay, yeah, we talk about the other guys too. Mm -hmm. In the appendix, we can see character studies too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see different faces and the names and your notes on it. 
how many percent of creating these characters is your work and how much is Garth's? How much does he say, okay, the girl has to be a blonde, has to be uh, this, this age and so on? Yeah, I, I get the, the, the description from Garth. Okay. Uh, like those general descriptions. Detail. Yeah, like color of her hair, mm -hmm. uh, how old he is or she is or, or stuff like that. Uh, it was a little bit more detail for, for the two main characters and for, for, for the rest of them it was not so specific. Yeah. So this is basically where, where I get to do my thing. Yeah, yeah. So he told you make them look like the man of black? <laughs> they all have the oh, black suits? No, well I mean of course in description it was like but not man in black but for FBI agents. Yeah. So for FBI agents basically to have the suit is almost like uniform, yeah. Okay. But since they are a girl and a guy and yeah. they have the suits, of course there's uh, X-Files. Uh, uh, parallels. Uh, parallels, although this book is really nothing like... <laughs> X-Files. It's another great work. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is a great work, but X-Files is, beside all the conspiracy and everything, in a way it's pretty light. Mm -hmm. Serious, mm -hmm. and this is really dark. Yes, yes. I got and a chance really to read some pages uh, in the uh, in pre-show, mm. and I can uh, understand what you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So maybe it's the right time to talk about what's the content, what is the story about, and what is the whole comic about. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can give us a little pitch. What is um, the walk through hell about? Okay. Well. Uh, okay. So I'm not really sure. Okay. Raise your hands. How many of you have read? The, the book yet probably not because it's okay one two three oh, three okay. okay and you read the first one yeah yeah okay the second one isn't out yet <laughs> sure. uh, I'm, I'm trying not to give away too much that's uh -huh. that's uh, but the story starts uh, with two agents uh, coming to the warehouse at uh, suburban Los Angeles because two of their uh, colleagues went inside and they never came back. And they sent in the SWAT team, special, special ops, you know. And those guys who are like hard, you know, SWAT guys, you know, everything, they came into the warehouse and just went out mm -hmm. and killed themselves mm -hmm. because of her in the warehouse. And so our two main characters, Shaw and McGregor, they go in and uh, Strange things starts to happen. Okay. Yeah, but so I really wouldn't tell more about it. Yeah, of course, it's, I know spoilers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah you should Good start idea. reading. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to really repeat that it's a it's a serious book and it's not gonna make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said there's a lot of talk in the comic book. Mm -hmm. They talk a lot, and uh, that's what I, I think so too. How many character depth is there in these characters? From the some pages I read, I really think they're very detailed. There's very much background about it. Maybe you can tell us something about the depth of the characters. Mm -hmm. Well, there is. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's one of the reasons that uh, one of the things that Garth is known for is those strong characters. So he's building up those characters little by little. Because beside uh, uh, the warehouse, what's happening in the warehouse, we have lots of flashbacks because uh, seemingly unrelated to the warehouse, uh, they had the inv investigation about, about uh, child murders and, and uh, child abuse and they were following this track and we, we are learning about it from the flashbacks. Also from those flashbacks, we, we learn more about uh, our main protagonist, mm -hmm. uh, where they come from, and you know what's what's their motivation <laughs> and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I think it goes quite deep, and it goes even deeper in the second book. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very looking forward to it. I'm, uh, I think it's great. And you publish the uh, comic book on a very relatively new publisher, R relatively new. Uh -huh, Aftershock, um, Aftershock one of, uh, with a, had actually had a great impact because lots of great artists are working mm -hmm. there doing great jobs and sometimes people compare it to Image. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us something about your experience with Aftershock. What is the special thing about this publisher? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, first thing, uh, Aftershock, the, the is the editor-in-chief or CEO, one of the main guys in, in Aftershock is uh, Joe Pruitt. Mm -hmm. 
and I know Job Pruitt for more than 20 years. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy and he's a big uh, comic enthusiast. Uh, in the 90s, uh, he was publishing and editing an uh, anthology called The Negative Burn. And there he would publish lots of short stories, uh, lots of uh, artists that became like really popular who published some of the early works there. And he would also publish there uh, some of the like private pet projects from the known uh, artists. Uh, and this is I think how I met him a long time ago. And actually what was supposed to be my first American work was also with, with uh, Joe Pruitt. It didn't come out uh, until later, but uh, so I know him for a long time. Mm -hmm. And also Gart knows him, and uh, Gart was already working for Aftershock, mm -hmm. uh, he published Jimmy's Bastards. Yeah. So when he had the pitch uh, for, for Walk Through Hell, uh, it felt quite natural to go to Aftershock. And uh, and they are really great. I mean, it's probably also because we know each other for so long, but I think it's also because it's Garth Ennis. Uh, so they know that, you know, he has the name, he has the, the, yeah. the audience, and they trust him. So we got a really uh, good arrangement about uh, having our creator own book yeah. and still uh, being paid at some uh, mm. level so I can work on it, the, the, the trouble you probably know, the trouble with creator-owned books sometimes, like with the image, is they will publish your creator-owned book, but they won't pay you like yeah. you're getting paid for a hired work. You know, in that case, you have to draw everything, publish it, wait for it to sell, hope it will sell, yeah, and make some money, and then you will get some money. Mm. So that this is really difficult. Uh, I mean. For the writers, it's not that difficult. It takes less time for the writers to write it. Also, you can write a couple of books, and so you can have like three books that's being paid and uh, write fourth one for yourself. Yeah. But uh, if you're an artist and you need to draw all this, it takes way much more time, so in the meantime, you have to make a living. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we, we, we made uh, uh, Aftershock was really, really nice about it, you know, so, so they uh, afforded me to, to work on this book yeah. and in a way get paid if it was a work for hire and yet uh, it is our book uh, so mm -hmm. uh, it's not you know just doing this for somebody else and and also since this is our book uh, we really don't get any interference mm -hmm. from from the editor it's great he's, really? he's much more like like a service yeah. you know, about whatever needs to be done in the production way or anything like that, yeah. yeah. So this is a good point. How much do they support you and help you, for example, getting you into comic conventions and festivals like this? Is this uh, something Aftershock is doing for you too? No, no, no. You do it by your own? Yeah, yeah. But uh, so. that's, in, in general, that's not, uh, that's not something publishers would do. In Germany, they too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, yeah, this is different. So I've been to Germany many times because most of the books that I did for American uh, market has been published in Germany by Panini. So Panini would invite me to promote the book here. Uh, also, uh, I had some books published in Italy, so I would get invited by the Italian publisher to, to promote it. But it's not happening in the States. They're not going to invite me. As a publisher, they're not going to invite me to the United States to promote the book. Uh, it would probably be too expensive. Mm -hmm. I think also one of the reasons why I'm here so often is because I live in Croatia, so it's near. It's not the same cost getting somebody from New York or mm -hmm. Los Angeles here or somebody who's one hour away. So yeah. yeah, so it's usually the, the European publishers that that would uh, invite me to to promote the book. Yeah, maybe a short question in between because mm -hmm. on the coffee for our talk, you told me you're back to your homeland. Congratulations, yeah. back to. Yeah. Um, is there any uh, comic book industry there? Uh, yes, yes. I'm not sure if I would call it the industry. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, okay, without going too much into details, yeah. but. Uh, 
when we were Yugoslavia, it was a 20 million people there, and we had a real industry, like comic industry, when there was uh, lots of comics published, all kinds of comics published, uh, American, French, Italian, everything except mangas were, were, were published back home, and we also had a really strong domestic scene, and I could call it industry because at that point, uh, at that time, uh, you could actually have domestic artists working and being paid for that, like we had actually production. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's uh, much smaller and, uh, and the comics are not as popular as they used to be. Mm -hmm. So now you can't have a production really, you can't pay an artist because to, to draw a comic book for you and you will sell it because you can't sell it enough. To, to cover the costs. So all one-man shows? Yeah, the, the, the thing is that uh, really, I mean, now, now we have uh, publishers that are really great, uh, but fair publishing uh, books that's already been done in the States or uh, France or Italy or wherever. So my, my books that I did for American publishers are getting published in Croatia. Okay. As a foreign books translated from English to, to Croatian. Okay, okay, yeah, that's yeah. How it works. Okay. But but now I mean it's it's much better now because uh, ten or fifteen years ago there was always almost nothing. Now we have a couple of publishers and we have really nice and beautiful books, but they are selling in couple of hundreds, not thousands. And, okay, yeah, and they are quite expensive, of course. So not everybody can buy all the books they want. But uh, there's another great change that uh, now in the libraries, where kids or grown-ups will go to borrow mm -hmm. the, 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 the books and read it and put yeah. it back, now they have the huge sections with, with comics. All genres? All genres. Great. All genres, so you can, if you want to read comics, you can actually do it for free. You can go borrow the comic and read it return it, you know, so you don't have to buy all of them, because you can, but you can read all of them, basically for free, mm -hmm. and then the ones you like most, you can buy it, you know. But it's also a great support for, for, for the publishers, because uh, actually the, the, the Ministry of Culture uh, supports, is, it. supports it, because uh, the, the library is a part of the state, uh, Offices, whatever. It's no. public administration. Yeah, yeah, they are public uh, spaces. So they buy those books for the libraries. Okay. So part of the, the runs on, 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 on for every publisher is bought by the state. So yeah. Yeah. libraries are always great to find new readers. It's a great, yeah, great yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In all ages. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks for the short explanation uh, okay. for this. You told us there's issue number nine is out right now. It's released right now, isn't no, it? No, no, no. Uh, it's 11. 11, oh, okay, oh, yeah. close to the end, okay. Yeah, 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 so there's just one issue left, yeah, and I'm finishing it right now. <laughs> How's the feedback? The feedback of the journalists, the readers especially, mm -hmm. what do they say about it? Well, I think when, when it started, well, like when the first issue out, was out, really there were lots of people like, oh, this reminds me of X-Files. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think with every next issue, it was like nobody was interested in the X-Files anymore. Uh, I think the, the, the response was quite good. The mm -hmm. response was quite good. Uh, people were... Uh, well, there's one thing, of course, everybody who likes and loves Garth Ennis usually knows what to expect with his books. And uh, so, so far he's been fulfilling those yeah. expectations. Uh, but this book is a little bit different from other Gartenis books. It's way more subtle mm -hmm. and, and there's not much, not much humor in it. Mm -hmm. You know, with the Gartenis, even if it's dark and violent, there's always humor in it, whether you like it or not, <laughs> but there's humor in it. Here, there are not, there's not much humor in it. Okay. And that's, the, I mean, that's on purpose. But also, you will also notice that there's not lots of gore. Uh -huh. Which is also very characteristic for for guards, like you know, yeah, split but, out. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't have that here, not not in a visual way, and that was also done on purpose. You okay. you, you also don't have a as a fix, you know, like blam, uh, yeah, no, nothing like that. So that, 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 that
Sound works, boom, bang. Boom, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you mean. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we don't have it here. That that's also on purpose. I think it it creates uh, sense more sense of being realistic. I guess. Yeah. yeah. The series is recommended for measured readers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the German version, they recommend to be. Uh, 16 years old and older, but are there any borders, any things you won't do for the series, or but do you show everything Garth wants to see? Yeah, I mean, I draw what Garth writes. You know, <laughs> you don't, <laughs> you don't do it like you know. I mean, if you agree to 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 work with Garth, you know you're gonna have to draw some unpleasant things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you can't complain later. You know? <laughs> yeah, but some some things were really like I felt sick in my stomach, stomach okay. drawing them. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, one question I'm always thinking about: um, if you compare the issues you usually do in the United States mm -hmm. and you have the traits in Germany, especially on cross cut, we you have uh, that hard covers mm -hmm. a bit shorter. Um, what's your favorite kind of publishing these comics? Um, I think the, the, the US issue is a bit bigger, isn't it? A bit a bigger? Little, a little bit bigger. A little bigger? Yeah, what, they, do you, yeah. what do you like more, as a reader, for example? I, I like them smaller. I mean, I like if... Uh, well, especially, I mean, with, with my art style, which is like really clean and crisp, I think it works better like this. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like, uh, so I worked on Why the Last Man. Yeah. Uh, and then they would make those absolute editions. Yeah, big ones, very yeah. Big. Okay. You don't really benefit from this, uh -huh. you know. I mean, if you publish Bran Bolland or Alex Ross on a big format, you know, that's yeah, like, you sense. know. But uh, with most of the books, I, I don't think they should be really that large. I think they, I, I like them handy. I want to have them in my hands and okay. read them. That's one thing. Uh, and, and the other thing is that I understand it's a tradition and blah blah blah, but I think those single issues that Americans are doing are really not my thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I would really prefer if they would have just books like I mean, they call it graphic novels, but they are not actually graphic novels. Yeah, yeah. They are trade paperbacks with collected single issues. Uh, but I would prefer. So I'm not buying single issues either. If I if there's a book I'm interested in, I will wait for the trade. Yeah, so I like it much better like this. Okay. Yeah. 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 I heard a, a, about a trend um, that the issues, uh, issue releases, uh, there's a decline in, in selling these issues because mm -hmm. there's a little trend to the trades. I mm -hmm. I heard I read somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting to see into uh, to because I think there uh, there could be possible changes in writing comics and doing comics if you do them for the trade. If you know, mm -hmm. okay, I don't care about the issues. There doesn't have to be a cliffhanger because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. there's a bigger story I can tell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's one thing that I, I, I think it, it would uh, do better for the writers than, of course, for the readers too, if they could do it like as a trade, like one book after book, you, you can construct it different yeah. because you wouldn't have to do those cliffhangers. Uh -huh. On the other hand, you can still do it and, and just treat it as a chapter. Mm -hmm. So you can still have a cliffhanger at the chapter. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I find first frustrating is, you know, if you follow some series and you know it comes out once a month, mm -hmm. and then you buy it <laughs> and you got 15 minutes of joy, <laughs> and and then it's like oh, another another yeah. month to wait. So for, that that's hard for me, I think. Yeah, but but I, uh, as far as I know, yes, single issues are dropping down in sales, mm -hmm. they are struggling with it, but they also have the problem with this direct market and comic shops, it's much more complex. But the good thing is that uh, trade paperbacks became normal things. Uh, yeah. 15 years ago, it wasn't that lots of single issues uh, uh, would be collected in trades, but not all of them, Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is just stupid. Ask because the German Hellblazer fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know uh, the 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 the, the floppies, they would be there on the shelves for that month. Next month, they're off the shelves. So if you didn't buy it, you have to, you know, search for it or whatever. So it's even bad for the publishers. With the trade paperbacks, they're always there, so people can buy it and buy it and buy it and buy it. Mm -hmm. Like why the last man, last book was published ten years ago. Yeah. People are still buying it. The absolute edition. Yeah, yes. 
the absolute edition or regular uh, trades or whatever, but they are there and you can buy it. You don't have to search for the back issues. Okay. You know? yeah. So I think it's good for the publishers and for the readers to concentrate on this. Yeah. One thing I always ask in my interviews is, because it's my cup of tea, is the uh, digital distribution. Mm -hmm. What do you think about buying comics digital? Is it something you, you can connect to or don't you like it? Well, I, I, I don't do it personally, but I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Like I would meet more and more people who like comics and like reading comics. They just don't have enough space anymore for yeah. all the books they want to read. So what they would do, similar to the libraries, they would uh, get the digital copies and they would read it. And so they would read it and uh, then the ones that they like most would buy printed on paper and, and have it at home. So I think digital comics are good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you, you don't buy them because you don't they're yeah, not connected? I don't buy them because I already bought so many comics that I didn't read yet. Yeah, there's enough to read. Yeah, there's enough to read. Enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that's why I don't do okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. One thing I want to talk about before we go to our questions, I really like the variant covers of, uh -huh. of, the, of the series we can see in the appendix of the German version mm -hmm. too. Did you recommend any artists in there or did the, no. the publisher everything? What, no, no. How does it work? Uh, I think, well, the, 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 the variant cover I did, uh, I did because I was approached by, by people from the comic shop who wanted a, a variant cover. And uh, I think all the other variant covers were done as somebody's arrangement about it. Anyway, I had nothing to do with it. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, there are great covers and everything, but uh, that, that, that was just a surprise for me too. Okay. You know, like I, I would get the comps of the first issue and mm -hmm. I, would, I got all those variant covers too. So I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, Great. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah. So let's go to the audience. <laughs> are there any questions out there? Do you want to I'm ask? Sure there go are. on anything? Yeah. Don't be um, shy. There's some time left. Anybody? Der Herr aus dem Publikum stellt hier eine Frage zum Produktionsprozess. Im Appendix, also quasi im Anhang zum Comic, wäre das sehr detailverliebte Skript Garth Ennis zu sehen gewesen. Und derjenige, der diese Frage gestellt hat, wollte von Goran wissen, ob das immer der Fall ist, dass Autoren so dermaßen detailgenau in ihren Skripts vorgehen oder ob das eine Ausnahme ist. That's a standard procedure, yes, that's a standard procedure, but some writers would... Uh All the writers would uh, accept, uh, at least the ones I worked with, uh, all the writers would uh, write the full script. So it's page one, panel one, description of the panel and the dialogues. Uh, some of the writers, if like you have like dialogue scenes, would uh, just say like, John talking to Jane, without depicting the, the, the panel, so this is where you, so, so, so sometimes they would leave more space to you, like do whatever you think, but the dialogues, he's what they have to say, you know. Uh, Gart is a bit more specific. Uh, yeah. Die nächste Frage aus dem Publikum kommt vom selben Herren, der nochmal wissen wollte, in welchen Abständen und regelmäßigen Intervallen die Skripts von Garth kamen, also ob er schon alle Skripts aller zwölf Hälfte zu Beginn hatte oder eben erst Stück für Stück während des Produktionsprozesses dann die einzelnen Skripte für die einzelnen Issues bekommen hat. No, no, uh, I did answer that yeah. question. So when I started, uh, when I got the first issue, the script for the first issue, I started working on it and then I need some months to do it, first issue, uh, but Gart was writing issue after issue in his own rhythm, which was much faster than mine. So I think I was around issue nine when he sent in the script for number 12. So that was some months ago where I knew uh, to the detail, details how it's gonna end, yeah. I mean, I knew how it's gonna end uh, from the pitch, the ending itself, yeah. but, but uh, how we get there uh, issue by issue is, ja, ich habe das earlier, ja. Eine Dame aus dem Publikum fragt ihn, ob er ein Lieblingsgenre bzw. Lieblingsthemen hat. Sie hätte den Eindruck, dass vor allem Horror sein Ding wäre. Ah, uh, well, I would say horror, I guess. But 
it's really for me not about it's, it's the same answer to, to like what is your favorite superhero uh, really in fact I really don't care as long as it's uh, well written because you know I can have my favorite genre or I can have favorite character but if the script is not good I'm, I'm not gonna enjoy it ein Herr aus dem Publikum fragt ihn, ob er einen Lieblingsautor bzw. Autorin hat, für die er gern schreiben würde, bzw. ein Lieblingsthema, das er sehr gerne bearbeiten würde. Well, I have a favorite art, uh, favorite writers I would like to work with. And uh, my answers before would always include Gartenis, so he's off my list now. <lacht> Uh, I was also lucky enough to, to, to work with Brian K. Vaughan or Brian Azarello, who are also great writers, or Jamie Delano. So I would like to work with any of them again, anytime. But I would also would really love to work with Ed Brubaker. He's one of my favorite writers. Of course, Alan Moore, but not gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know it would be great to work with Neil Gaiman too. Although that would probably be something different than anything I worked so far on. Grant Morrison? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really not a big fan of Grant Morrison. And I have really good friends who really loved him so much. And that, that, that's one point where we... I haven't read that much on Grant okay. Morrison because I, I, I read a couple of things I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, same goes to Warren Ellis. I tried a couple of things. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should give it another try, but I still have so many books from my favorite writers yeah, that I haven't yeah, yeah. read yet. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, I gave it a try, and I, I really didn't like it. Yeah, so they are not my favorite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Eine Frau fragt ihn, was er als nächstes tun wird. Uh, what's my next project? I'm gonna be a dad. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, uh, yes, I, I'll. We finished with Walk Through Hell uh, before July and we're expecting a baby in September. So I want to have everything ready and you know, I think first couple of months will be really, really uh, busy with that. Uh, so I didn't uh, take any new projects yet because I'm not going to be able to really devote to it before next year. So I have some time to decide what I want to do. And, and th I think also this is uh, one of the things like after you work with Garth Ennis, so like... You need a break. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, you need a break too, yeah. But it's also like I really want that next book I'm working on should also be uh, a really well-written book, you know. Okay. Uh, it, it happened over the years and I'm really grateful for that. Like, You ask me what changed uh, in the last 10 years since that. So 10 years ago I was still having uh, what they call freelance trigger. Once you're close to finishing some gig, first thing that is offered to you next, you say yes, because you don't know, you know. And over, the, over these 10 years I, I think I built up uh, my reputation, yeah. my skill, uh, connections and everything. Now I'm uh, more in a situation where I get offers to work on something. Can choose. So so I can choose. Yeah. This, this is was I mean I was so thrilled to to be asked to work on Daredevil. That was one of the things where like wow, <laughs> it's Daredevil. And then in the middle of working on Daredevil, Garth Ennis asked you to work with him. So you know in in, in a two years time, I came from, wow, I'm working on Daredevil to, okay, I'm leaving Daredevil because I have something better to, not better to do, but something I want more to do. So I think whatever next thing would be, I, I'll choose it carefully. I don't have to rush into new decisions because it happens sometimes that you get offered to do something and it sounds maybe like a good idea, turns out it's not. and. Uh, I want to be careful not not to get to that situation. Yeah, yeah Daredevil is a special situation here in Germany. They stopped mm -hmm. releasing German uh, Daredevil series here in Germany. Oh uh, yeah, I heard it, it wasn't selling very well. Yeah, so there's a big online thing uh, with a hashtag "I am Daredevil." Uh -huh. 
We are open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great, thank you. Any questions left? Okay, maybe we take the five minutes because we got to know you're a reader too and you're a fan of the comics and so on. Maybe you can give us any recommendations about comics you read in the last weeks, months. Huh. Good stuff. Okay. Well, I would always recommend Brian K. Wan. Yeah. Really, I think he's my favorite all time. So, Saga, Paper Girls, uh, anything by, by Brian K. Wan, I would highly recommend. But I guess this recommendation for the something people already know. Oh, well, I don't know if it's published in, in German, but there's a great uh, new Western series. It's been published in France. Uh, it's called Marshall Bass. Mm -hmm. uh, it is written by Darko Matsan and, and illustrated by Igor Korday, about Croatian artists, veterans. This is brilliant. So if any of you speak French, it's called Marshall Bass. It's about Afro-American yeah. uh, sheriff. It's a Western, but it's really dark and gritty. Maybe it, it will be published in, in, in... Is there an English version? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. So I read it in Croatian because it's published in Croatia too. But four books have been published in, in France. Maybe if it's published in, in Germany, do check it out. Remember Marshall Bass. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah you're going to thank me later. Yeah. Will do. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much for your thank time. Thank you for, for having me. And yeah. have a nice uh, festival. Thank Thanks. you. I'm Bye. already enjoying it. Yeah? <laughs>